Hey guys, in this video we're going to do a proof from real analysis, but the problem also applies to Calc 2 courses. So it says to prove that the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 to the n times n over 4 to the n is equal to 0. To solve this problem we're going to use the ratio test for sequences as opposed to the ratio test for series. And so I'm going to paste the definition of what the ratio test is and how you do it. But before I do that, you might be wondering well, how do I know to use the ratio test as opposed to any other test? For me, the usual rule of thumb is that if I see a to the n, so some number raised to n, then I will at least think of the ratio test, although there might be an easier way to do it or the ratio test might not always work in those cases. But as a rule of thumb, if you see a to the n and then times something else, usually you can do the ratio test for that type of problem. So this is the definition of the ratio test for sequences copied straight from my textbook. It says, let x of n be a sequence such that x of n does not equal 0 for all n, and this should be n in the naturals, by the way, and let there be a limit that exists, that is, the limit as n goes to infinity of x of n plus 1 over x of n. So you evaluate this and you get L. If L is less than 1, then that sequence that you have, x of n, converges and the limit of x of n is equal to 0. If L is greater than 1, then x of n is a divergent sequence. Okay, so we can use this because x of n does not equal 0 for all n of n. So that's the first thing we're going to say in the proof. So we're going to let x of n be equal to the sequence that we were given, which is 3 to the n over n times 4 to the n. Then x of n is greater than 0 for all n in n. Because n is equal to 1, the only way this could be 0 would be if n is 0, and n is never going to be 0, and a number to an exponent will never be 0 either. So we know we can apply the ratio test for sequences. So now we're going to take the limit of x of n plus 1 over x of n. So we have x of n plus 1 over x of n. And these are the absolute values, by the way. I guess I left that out. So the absolute value of x of n plus 1 is going to be 3 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 over 4 to the n plus 1. And then instead of dividing again, I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's going to be 4 to the n over 3 to the n times n. So then we're going to simplify this expression. As we're going to see, the 4 to the n in the numerator cancels out from the denominator, and we're left with just 4 from the denominator. The same thing we can do with the 3 to the n, so that's going to cancel out and just leave a 3. And then we have n plus 1 in the numerator and n in the denominator. And we can simplify that further to be 1 plus 1 over n. So now we can take the limit of that, so we have thus the limit of the absolute value of x plus 1 over the absolute value of x of n as n goes to infinity is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 fourths times 1 plus 1 over n. There's a theorem that says that we can distribute this, so we're going to do 1 plus the limit of 1 over n because the limit of a constant is obviously just the constant, and we know that the limit of 1 over n is 0, so we have that this is equal to 3 fourths times 1 plus 0, which is equal to just 3 fourths. And by the ratio test for series, that means that 3 fourths is less than 1, and thus the sequence converges and the limit of the sequence is equal to 0. So we're just going to write that in the concluding statements. So by the ratio test for sequences, the limit of x of n as n goes to infinity is equal to the limit of 3 to the n times n over 4 to the n, which is equal to 0. And we're done with this problem.